that the, the zone <coughs> is this, and you just keep this focus on the board. Okay, fifteen. So today we want to see uh, yet another application of the similar idea uh, in a sense that was used uh, in the page rank algorithm. <coughs> and uh, this is the problem. So you are at a party, right? And you talk to your neighbor, right? Uh, but of course there is noise coming from outside from the traffic and also conversation of other people uh, although they are farther away uh, uh, from you than uh, your partner uh, produce noise, it's noise for you, right? So if there are lots of people eventually uh, to make sure that your partner hears you, you raise your voice, right? But now your voice is noise to other people, right? So they raise their voices too, which in turn produce more noise to you, and you raise your voice even more, right? So <coughs> this is exactly the same situation that happens when you talk on your mobile phone. You see, when you talk, when your mobile phone communicates with the base station, right, with the tower, um, the separation between the channels is imperfect, right? There are no brick walls that strictly filter out uh, adjacent bandwidth. So the communication of, yet, of other users uh, produces noise to you. And of course, on top of it, you have also ever-present noise from the spark plugs of the cars, from electric machines like uh, motors for elevators, and uh, um, uh, so even uh, uh, radiation that comes from space, and of course noise that is produced by the hardware, imperfections of the hardware, right? Your hardware implements finite precision arithmetic, and uh, uh, of course the algorithms are only kind of approximations, or are always uh, approximate algorithms, so this also produces noise. So exactly the same problem can happen uh, in this situation in order to achieve a sufficient signal to interference ratio, right? Your phone might be tempted to increase its output power. But now your increased output power causes more noise in neighboring channels that other people are communicating, and their mobile phone uh, uh, will have tendency to increase the power to maintain the signal to interference ratio, right? And pretty soon, <coughs> everyone would be blasting full power from mobile phones. Uh, the power that your mobile phone radiates uh, uh, depends uh, on the distance uh, to the tower. If you are close to the tower, then it uses much less power, output power, than if you are farther away in the same cell, right? And so the question is now, <coughs> how do you prevent this uh, uh, war of escalation of the power, right? And uh, uh, that was one of the solutions that, uh, if I remember it correctly, that, came, that made uh, Qualcomm uh, so successful because they found an extraordinarily simple algorithm 
to maintain sufficient signal to interference ratio for all participants while maintaining minimal total radiated power. Right? So, to make things a little bit more precise, I'll say here you have, these are the transmitters, and uh, uh, so this is transmitter D1, D2, D3, and say here you have receiver R1, receiver R2, receiver R3, right? You can think uh, they can be either depending who is sending, whether you are receiving or sending uh, information. Of course, this changes who is the tower and who is uh, uh, the receiver, the more your uh, receiver, right? So um, the main channels are the direct channels. So from T1 to R1, from T2 to R3, and from uh, T3 uh, to R3, right? These are the main channels. But as I mentioned, because the separation, a radio cannot separate uh, ideally the adjacent bandwidths, right? Um, you actually also have spurious channels that go from uh, T1 to R2 and from T1 also to R3 and similarly uh, for all uh, pairs, right? So what is then the signal to interference ratio. Uh, well, um, there is a quantity that is called, uh, and somewhat confusingly, the channel gain. Namely, the channel gain, if you have, uh, uh, say, channel um, between uh, T1 uh, to receiver R1, then the gain of this channel from transmitter 1 to receiver 1 uh, is uh, simply a number so that when you multiply it by the power of transmitter 1, uh, you get the amplitude of the uh, received the signal in the uh, in the receiver A. So this is called the channel gain. Uh, this is uh, transmit power. And this is uh, 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 received, uh, I'll say, uh, RMS of received uh, signal. Now, of course, uh, it would be more logical to call the uh, channel attenuation, right? Because the channel attenuates the signal that comes from the transmitter uh, towards uh, uh, the receiver, right? But for some reason it's called the channel gain. So let's see then. Um, and now notice there are also spurious channels. So you will have also the gain of, say, channel that goes from transmitter 1 into receiver 2. So this is a uh, uh, gain of uh, the channel uh, from a uh, transmitter uh, 
one uh, to the receiver two, which is a is a spurious channel. Something that you don't want, but it happens uh, simply because it's impossible, uh, even though they might communicate on different, but say adjacent frequencies, uh, then T1, uh, while sending signal to R1, will also produce noise, uh, it will produce, it will be received in R2, but there it only represents noise. So what is then a signal to interference? So this is signal to interference ratio. Right uh, at a receiver I, it denoted by S I, right? So what is S I? Well, what is the signal? The signal will be the gain of the channel I I times the transmit power of the I receiver because that's the voltage that uh, the receiver will get from the proper channel, and then the noise created by everyone else. So this will be sum of all j that are not equal to i, and then gain from transmitter j to receiver i. So transmitter is always uh, the second our coordinate receiver is the first coordinate. So the transmission goes from J to uh, I. Times uh, PJ, right? That's the noise due to other parties in communication. Plus noise, uh, let's call it an I that the uh, I receiver receives from the environment, right? Spark plugs and uh, all other uh, stuff, the cosmic radiation, and of course the noise generated by the very operation of the receiver, both algorithmically due to say round of errors and uh, of course the thermal noise in the receiving amplifier. So this is your uh, signal to interference ratio. What you want to do, now each of the participants uh, has certain uh, signal to inter needs certain signal to interference ratio. And uh, what should be this signal to interference ratio? Well, this might depend on the equipment that the user has might also depend on the type of uh, uh, data being sent. Uh, so you will need, uh, if you are sending uh, lots of data, you will need a uh, uh, higher signal to interference ratio to enable larger throughput. So you have to maintain uh, this ratio bigger than gamma i. We will uh, then in a very kind of nice uh, way how this is practically done, uh, explain how gamma i is determined. Uh, you will see how different algorithms for different purposes actually work in synergy and inform each other. So you want to ensure this uh, while uh, uh, making some total of all powers uh, uh, as small as possible. So that everyone's battery life is uh, maximized, right? So you want to find 
the minimal total arachnoids. You want to make uh, participants uh, irradiate minimal total power while everyone gets enough bandwidth for its purpose by ensuring that the signal to interference ratio is sufficiently large. <laughs> now, we have to determine the powers, right? So that we don't get with this war of permanently increasing powers. So here, powers are unknown. So we should put here, uh, find powers pj such that uh, this constraint is true while sum of all powers is minimal. So powers are unknown quantities that you want to determine. Huh? Okay? Yes? So the towers, uh, with your phone, if you move into an area where a new tower is close up, does that tower be, uh, become, like it changes from two to one? Or Yes, uh, no, 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 no. As you move, uh, uh, your cell phone actually finds out uh, by simply testing the received signal of multiple towers uh, which one it should uh, hook up. Uh, uh. So you, instead of being received a two, you are now receiving a one because you've entered the area. Uh, yeah, this can be, uh, uh, you know, this can be even. Um, uh, the same tower, transmitters can be even on the same tower, but uh, you see the tower actually radiates broadband, the frequency that has frequency slots for different users, right? So they can be, in fact, uh, both towers, both the same tower on different frequencies, and adjacent towers that operate precisely on your frequency will save noise for you. Right? And that's actually a very good question. When you are flying, yeah, before the flight, the, uh, the flight attendant tells you that you should switch off your mobile phone. Why is this so? You see, they tell you that it can interfere with the uh, equipment of uh, the airplane, which is total ballooning. <laughs> uh, you know, the airplane systems are well shielded and there is no uh, slightest chance that your dinky mobile phone can cause harm to such a sophisticated equipment. The reason for that is to avoid horrendous confusions when you take off, you will cross very quickly from the domains of several towers and you will be flipping from one tower to another foul tower, which causes disturbance in the system, right? Because just the moment you are connected to one tower, you are already out of range and you have to connect to another tower. And of course, this involves, uh, uh, you know, the handshaking between the mobile phone and the tower. So if, uh, if you have lots of mobile phones doing that, you, it can just overwhelm uh, the, the towers uh, by doing rapid switch, right? So this is actually the true reason. Okay, so now, um, uh, if P's are variables, uh, how would you solve this optimization problem? How would you ma minimize this sum while forcing this uh, inequality. Is this a linear inequality? Well, you have a ratio, so it's not linear. But is it really not linear? How would you linearize this constraint? What's the equivalent linear constraint? You just move the denominator to the other side. Sorry? Move the denominator to the exactly. other side. Exactly. You just multiply with the denominator. So let's see what we get. So we get that GII times PI, 
has to be bigger or equal than gamma i times, uh, and then here you have sum over j not equal to i of uh, g i uh, j, right? Uh, p j plus uh, noise i, right? When you multiply. And then what you can do, you can bring everything on the same side and get uh, and divide with uh, GII, uh, GII, so you get that PI uh, minus uh, gamma uh, I uh, times sum of G i j divided by G i i p j um, and then you have a plus sorry a i bits bigger or equal than gamma i noise i divided by g i i. Now all the variables are on the same side of the inequality and we also know that p uh, j's have to all be bigger or equal than zero, right? In fact, simply bigger than zero. And what you, this then boils down to minimize Uh, sum of all the i's, of all i's, subject to constraint star, where star is this collection. What does, how do we call this kind of problem? linear programming problem, right? So it turns out to find optimal PIs, right? Each, um, the, each individual power is obtained by solving this linear programming problem. What is the problem with uh, this approach? What do you think? Why is this not the end of the story? We know how to solve large linear programming problems, so it means that's the end of it. You see, if you were, first of all, this is really a large problem to solve, right? Because there are many participants in the, and moreover, <coughs> all the participants, whoever is solving the problem, Maybe one of the towers should be solving the problem. Whoever is solving the problem, he needs to know uh, to transmit gamma i uh, to and uh, the noise i everywhere, and somehow it has to. Um, Optima, it has to determine what the individual gains of the channels are. And this is obviously because the situation keeps very quickly changing uh, users uh, uh, join and drop from the network. So that would be really an intractable problem. So what we need is a fully distinct distributed algorithm which relies absolutely on nothing that is not already available to the user. And somehow, even though each user will be doing the computation only from the data it has internally, right? Somehow, 
global minimum over all powers has to be achieved. Uh, right? And it's pretty amazing that uh, uh, this, in fact, uh, can be done. Do you appreciate the problem? Do you understand the problem? Right? This is a very large linear programming problem that participants would have to send their target gamma i's, then somehow these quantities will have to be um, estimated, and uh, um, they also have to send their noise levels, uh, and this has to be done. And then once the problem is solved, then the powers have to be broadcasted to everyone. And that's not a nice solution. And the solution that Qualcomm engineers found is extremely simple, an almost trivial algorithm with a non-trivial proof that actually the algorithm achieves what it purports to achieve. Okay, so uh, let's now figure out, let's derive the algorithm. So when we have large systems, linear systems, we like to represent them uh, with uh, matrices, right? So what would be the matrix uh, that corresponds uh, uh, to this system, uh, what would uh, look like? Well, um, let's denote these quantities. Let me now not change the notation from the notes so that I don't confuse you. Okay, let's denote this vector. So V. Uh, I guess transpose because we will write it as a row uh, will be the vector gamma one noise one divided by g one one uh, gamma two noise two divided by g two two and so forth gamma n well gamma k. Uh, noise k divided by g k k. So this is simply the right hand side of this. Um, what is uh, this expression? This expression can be compactly written uh, as uh, the following matrices uh, d times, so it's identity matrix to accommodate this, right? And then minus, uh, what was the matrix called the D times F. And then times vector P, right? These are all vectors has to be bigger or equal than vector t. Uh, and uh, uh, we want to minimize. Uh, so what is now d? d is just a diagonal matrix <laughs> that has just the gammas of the diagonal. Gamma 1, gamma 2, up to gamma k, and zeros everywhere, right? And matrix F looks like this. On the diagonal, it has zeros. And then off diagonal, it has a G I J divided by G I I, so uh, G I J divided by um, uh, what we so all diagonals are 
g i j divided by g i i on i uh, and j plays uh, right now if you see then um, when you multiply this diagonal matrix right with this matrix you will produce exactly the coefficients gamma i g i j and when multiplying with p right you will get precisely uh, this um, this term here right this term is just the product of uh, uh, df uh, times uh, times uh, vector p, right? Um, isn't, this, sorry, isn't this sum over all j not equal to either? So if you just have a p vector with all the... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So here is should be j not equal to i. Thank you. Yeah, so then, but then, so we need to turn it into matrix version. That's why you have zeros on the diagonal. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? So zeros of the diagonal screen out when i is equal to j. Right, yeah. And the rest, so you just get this okay. times uh, g1 k divided, right? Each column, each column will be multiplied by corresponding uh, gamma. And uh, when you do the product with pj, then you get precisely this. Okay, so, uh, so now our problem is uh, simply minimize uh, one transposed times p, because, so what is this? Uh, this is uh, simply uh, one, one, one times p one up to p k, and then you multiply these two vectors, right? You will get precisely sum of all p i. So, so you have to minimize this dot product while making sure that the solution uh, satisfies this constraint. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, well, the trick is this. Uh, in order for this to have a solution you should not be too greedy, and this, this we will see how it is uh, done. Gamma should not be too large. You should not require a large signal to interference ratio for everyone, but just enough to do the job for uh, reliable transmission. And so if gammas are not too large, uh, then the feature of uh, this uh, matrix df is such that if you take it to the power n, so the limit of uh, this when n goes to infinity should be the zero matrix. So, so as you will see, this is kind of akin to uh, summing a geometric progression, right? Q has to be smaller than one so that when you take it to the power n. This happens uh, <coughs> when uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, is true when uh, the spectral radius of df is strictly smaller than 1. What is the spectral uh, radius? Uh, spectral 
radius uh, <coughs> of uh, a matrix is uh, max of absolute values uh, of its uh, uh, of its eigenvalues. Uh, how shall we denote eigenvalues? We have gammas uh, max alpha i when i goes between one and k is uh, smaller than one. If the modulus of the eigenvalues, uh, um, okay, so is this where alpha i are the eigenvalues uh, of uh, df? Uh, if uh, the matrix, assume that the matrix has, for simplicity, has all k um, eigenvalues distinct. Why is then this true? Well, df can be then written as a matrix q uh, times a matrix that uh, has the eigenvalues alpha 1 up to alpha k on the diagonal, 0 here, and then times, well, in general, it's uh, conjugate transpose. You can think of it just, yeah, it's the conjugate transpose of matrix Q. But this is less important. Uh, what is now important is that uh, it's easy to see that in this case, Vf to the n is just Q because Q is a unitary matrix. If you multiply Q by Q star, you get a unit matrix. So if you imagine n matrices of this kind next to each other, Q star will kill the next Q. And so you get just Q uh, times uh, um, matrix of alpha 1 to the nth power up to alpha k to the n power times Q conjugate transpose. And now clearly, if all of these guys are smaller than one, then the diagonal entries in this matrix will go to zero. And consequently, DF will also